clockwork world. This independence of depending parts, rigged for time with pendulum and wheels, within the slap that started stars, was flung on a slow arc, still moving, swinging between opposites for ages, dark and light, the anchor teeth of death and life, balancing. It kept on in silence, wind, till acids were ribonucleic. This turning wheel turned others also slow, whose life was tiny. The vast wee populations lay down to die in oceans, Devonian, algae, microbes. Rock and shale grew over them. It took a while before the wheels with bells on turned. Life was vociferous, bursting, scaly. It steamed and crashed, crashed and burned. The buried small things cooked, jungles popped, the ringing stopped. Now just the gentle tick-tock of wheels that have been turning slowest, softest, long. In ditches, the dinosaur gears still smoked, broken off. Nature stripped back to its centre, swinging its orderly weight. Right, left, life, death. Reel in its anchor teeth, though the centre is neither, both, the same. Turned the wheels that were in first place, stuff of life and smallest life, waiting to grow a better sixth and eighth, a 330th that might be of interest. Warm heartbeats were part of the new arrangement. The dark and tiny dead still hid beneath Cretaceous seas, condensed. The human gear clicked in. Keenly we mapped out borders with dirks and rifles. Lands were said to belong to the folk who happened to stand upon them. And you could take other folks if you were stronger, said a beardy man called Cortez. We made a lot of noise. We competed with the dinosaurs. As land belonged to the folk, same for what was inside it. We opened the land right up, like a patient, a coffin, a purse. Put its riches into a clear glass jar and said the glass jar made them. On the label wrote the name of an economic system. Folk in love with different systems fought to stuff their jars the fullest, to show that theirs was best to disbelieving farmhands who thought they knew, you get back what you put in. All harvests must be seeded, calves or oats. You put back what you get out, skimming it for need, slipping the movement in with the wheels. Wealth never came from nowhere. The dark, small dead in the shale and rock fueled torches, engines, factories and empires. All their life, stopped over time as wide as a desert, flowed into our rigs, flared into a future that wouldn't stop. We could scoop their deaths back to use. This rounded off a little from one tooth of the pendulum's anchor, adding more to the other. The teeth of the anchor were huge. Relative to their size, the shifting amounts were inconsequential, and no one could say the shifting had been caused by us, because the reality of the pendulum itself was doubtful. It wasn't visible, only showed up on the underside of logic and mathematics and in music. We thought we'd always have enough of that stuff. The small bodies turned to liquid. It was like water. It came up from wells and ran through pipes. It was as plentiful, only we were burning it up. Our way of living ran on the borrowed blood, a gilded Cadillac. We were magnificent. Our arts and cities shone, our medicine and jumbo jets. We conquered outer space and snowy wastes. Our way of living was us. How could we give ourselves up? We grew gigantic by transfusion. Grown so tall, the other wheels were toy ones, tools. We knew we were cleverer than the logic of the clock that spawned us. We knew how to use things. Perhaps we were the whole point of the clock and having been born could dispense with those parts of the contraption for which we had no use. We surveyed its unproductive reaches and wondered why it was we found them beautiful. Nature was a dependence of independent parts, dependent on us. We took care of nature, our less capable but beautiful relation, or rather, we paid other people to do this for us. They were experts, it was safer. And death's side of the anchor kept on getting smaller. We were making that tooth rounder, adding more to life's tooth, adding faster. The first wheel, confused, began to click out of gear. Floods washed Colorado. Forest blazed. Ice melted. 
Our leader has said, pay no attention, the only bit of the clock that matters is our part, cleverest and best. The human wheel and culture that can split time into atoms, we are nature's full refinement. The pendulum, if it exists, is many gears away from here. The pendulum's anchor was an irrelevance which needed not be mentioned. It had been dealt with in a previous stanza. Mainly, life went on as normal. The wheels still worked, upsets were occasional, so mainly the rich folk looked right. In the back greens of tenements, on Morven at sundown, on the slants of Torridon, nature continued to branch and gather and divide. Folk had barbecues in summer. Ash leaves stamped the blue and fell. The logic of chrysanthemum petals in the vase mirrors the spirals of the fern out of doors. Nature's knowing doing lay in our genes, our bones, as in the seeming wild lands outside our eyes we windows. Could be this kinship was why we found nature beautiful, despite her uselessness for many money-raising purposes. Nettle and dahlia, collie and fox, stag and rat and chicken were nature, and our toes that stretched beneath the sheets, our hopes for happiness reaching for it, brushing against the world around us, this bed we dreamt inside were nature. The pigeon as the peewit, the urge to accumulate in banks as the wisdom of the well-run farm, no less a part of nature than those in human mountains than Kunag, Sullivan. The thing with the clock was its escapement mechanism to engage the first wheel by the opposite teeth of the anchor in turn attached to the pendulum had been designed to release the wheel one tooth at a time. With the teeth of the anchor uneven, thanks to our undoubtedly clever interventions, our operations on death performed as a side effect at a distance of 400,000 millennia. The wheel, which at first had just skipped out of gear now and then, looked by turns like it might race its weight to speed to the end of the universe first or stop where it was, frozen still. Our leaders said disregard this. It's part of nature's habit to have hiccups. Our wheel is strong. The anchor, whatever it is, can always be fixed by us if we want to. The anchor teeth grew more and more uneven. Everyone knew with their bodies that chimed with the clockwork, with the ribonucleic being of the wheel that means the most in all their cells, in their hearts and brains and guts. If that first wheel failed to engage or got stuck, the rest would all follow suit, all stop. Even if it were free, without an answering nudge, the pendulum itself might soon not budge. People had their suspicions, the barbecues would not have existed because life, with its time, would be gone. Nature is a clock in which life blooms from time, lives in the motion of the wheels, and we see them while the pendulum swings out of sight. <laughs>